Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in and a blessed Lord's Day to all of you. And best wishes for the celebration of the Virgin Mary's Dormition and her translation to the heavens. I have a re reflection for you today based upon the Sunday Gospel, which is the account of Jesus calming the storm and walking on the water, as recorded in Matthew chapter 14. The account is also described in Mark 6 and in John 6. I, I'd just like you to think with me a little bit uh, about embracing the real Jesus. The context for this incredible miracle of Jesus walking on the water, calming the storm, causing the boat, which was in the middle of the sea, to immediately be found at the land. This context for this great uh, system of miracles, this succession of miracles, comes right out of the feeding of the 5,000. So Jesus has just fed, miraculously fed the 5,000. The thousands and thousands of men, women, and children who have witnessed this miracle are now uh, having a mental uh, enthusiasm about what Jesus is and what he could do for them. In fact, John's Gospel records that Jesus perceived that the crowd was about to make an uprising and by force make him king. They were making conclusions uh, about Jesus and about his messiahship and about what he could do for them, freeing them from the Romans and from poverty and many other things. They were making conclusions that were not appropriate. Uh, they were perceiving that Jesus had come to do something, in fact, that he was not trying to do. He had something far, far more important that, to do than to free the Jews from the bondage of the Romans. And so Jesus curtly dismisses his disciples, deals with the people, sends the disciples into a boat uh, across the sea, and then Jesus retreats to pray seriously uh, in deep silence with his Father. And then at the fourth watch of the night, the disciples are in complete grief. They've been rowing, it says, uh, and rowing with great uh, failure. The wind's blowing. They've been rowing to the point of exhaustion, and they can't get anywhere. And then Jesus comes walking on the water. It's an amazing account. And when you put Matthew, Mark, and John together, it, it really fills out the, the picture the thing that strikes me the most is that as Jesus was walking on the water and the disciples perceive him, it says, uh, in fact, that he intended to pass them by. <laughs> what? Why would he intend to pass them by? Well, I think the answer to that is that Jesus was trying to convince them of something. He was trying to deliver his disciples from the contagion of this very earthly conception that the crowd that had just been fed, the 20,000 or so people who had just eaten from miraculously from these few fish and loaves, when Jesus multiplied them, they concluded that Jesus was there to, to politically free them, when in fact that's not the primary purpose of his coming. He came to free them from something a lot more grievous than Roman tyranny. And I think this account of Jesus walking on the water, passing by the disciples, is to show the disciples who he is. The people didn't get it, and so Jesus left them. But I, I think it's clear also that, and John makes it explicitly clear by saying that the disciples still were not able to perceive correctly because their hearts were hardened. Jesus was trying to draw them to faith a real faith in who he was and in what he came to do. And who he is, is the Son of God. He is everything that the Father is by nature. He himself is. He is literally the Theanthropos, the God-man. They see him in human flesh, but he's walking on the waves. And these Jewish boys knew there's only one who did that. There's only one who treads upon the waves, as the scriptures say, and that is God. He isn't just a, a miracle worker who had come to be a political savior. He is God who came to deliver us from what we really need to be delivered from, which is death and the presence of sin in our lives and the tyranny of the devil. 
this is our great liability. And to deliver us into a true freedom from those things is why Christ came as the Son of God. The disciples were a little dull, and sometimes we are too. They had seen this miraculous uh, multiplication of the loaves. Now they see Jesus walking on the water. They're about to see him calm the waves. The moment he steps onto the boat, boom, no more waves, no more wind. And then immediately the boat is where it needs to go. The result is they worship him and confess that he is the son of God. And this is the message to the whole world. You know, a lot of people have their ideas about Jesus. Oh, he's this or that. He was a great teacher. Uh, he was a Jewish rabbi that people just made stories up about. Fooey. Absolute fooey. This is the Son of God. He creates from nothing. He walks on the water and have complete has complete dominion over all of creation. Why? Because he is the Son of the Father. And he has all power to deliver us from our true enemies. And what will happen to us? What his ultimate goal is, is also appearing in this account when he puts his hands out to Peter and asks Peter to trust him. And Peter began, by faith, steps onto the water and then becomes, by the grace of God, what Christ is by nature. He literally walks on the water. He does what Christ does. And this is a beautiful picture for about our future. The church teaches that Everything that God is by nature, he has willed that we become by grace. What an affirmation. And this is the real Jesus. The real Jesus is the Son of God who has come to save the world from that which really threatens us, which is not political oppression or a collapsing America, but rather the tyranny of the devil, the threat of death and our own terrible sins, and to change us into people of faith, to transform us into his likeness. St. John says in his first epistle that when Christ comes, we will become like him because we will see him as he is. We do not yet know what will be, but we know this, that we're going to be like him, become children of God for all eternity. What a glorious uh, day today. I wish you a very happy Sunday and a tremendously joyful celebration of the Virgin Mary's Feast. God be with you. One of the most shocking realities of the preaching and teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ to his early first century Judean audience was his fervent, expansive, and repetitive teaching on heaven. Heaven literally permeates the Sermon on the Mount and our Savior's parabolic instruction the holy apostles received this single-eyed focus upon the next life from the Lord Christ and passed this teaching on to their disciples in the early church. Sacred tradition has vivified and animated the discipleship of Christians in their race toward heaven ever since. In these lectures, Father Josiah opens the scriptures and the writings of the church fathers on the subject of heaven in an effort to plant a deep impression of the future life for God's children and to stir up a great desire for obtaining it. For these and other available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.